Hey, hey, everybody, this is the Dark Match for the pay-per-view of SummerSlam. I am the Revolver Man. I'm Mr. War Machine, and I suck at openings. <laughs> I'm your token chick, Duo's Angel. And I am your foxy friend, Backlash, and I am having way too much fun playing with all the new buttons on my brand new keyboard. And I think Logitech owes us $10 for that promo. <laughs> and now it's time for something a little different. What is Kevin Nash tweeting? This is from uh, a couple months ago, actually, uh, and it reads as follows. <clears throat> Punk, if you want my backup, you've got my number. You're worth me going back on the road full time. Offer stands, understands if you want to go it alone. Foreshadowing. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Kevin Nash. Yeah, that was. Eh. I know exactly how you do an impression of a guy like that. Well, anyway, uh, the show opens up with uh, a very aptly named uh, guitar player called Tool doing the national anthem with. Uh, and I forgive to everybody who probably listened to this from the States a sickeningly huge amount of patriotic bullshit. <laughs> eh, I mean, what do you what do you expect? It's the WWE. And by the way, uh, I resent your comments, sir. Well, you, what you don't love America, boy? You, you, you got to fuck with us down here in America, up there in Canada land. <laughs> and by the way, his I'm name so is more maple syrup. Well, you know what? He acted hey, like a fucking tool. Milk. So I'm gonna call. How did he tool? act like a tool? All he did was play the national anthem on his guitar. Yeah, people. Everything made him look like a tool. Damn it. Shut your Canadian mouth. <laughs> Everybody outside the U.S. will agree with me. Your face is a tool. Let's move on. In defense, though, all countries tend to get very nationalistic sometimes. <laughs> yes. I don't think that was a word. Uh, Egoistic, if you want the proper word. Thank you. So, after the national anthem... Uh, it kind of pans out to the crowd, and already the show gets off to a great start, because you can totally see who's coming out next. <laughs> <laughs> because of, and because of the way they panned out, they totally showed um, Mrs. Grand Entrance, because what he was going to do is, which probably seemed a lot cooler in planning, he runs through these balloons that have awesome written on them, in what looks like they were written with silly string, and well, he did mouth- that. At, he did oh, that at WrestleMania too. So. He, he's been doing that. The he does that at most pay per views. Yeah, he I does think. that at most pay per views. A new thing. The thing is, though, they don't usually telegraph it like that. Well, still, I mean, it probably seems a lot cooler in planning because it never it never looks cool. I've never thought it was. cool. That is the least. Badass thing I have ever seen. Yeah, the man it, comes out through bubble letters. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> this and, is something you expect a teenage girl to do. Not, not only that, you notice that he has to put all his effort into pushing them out of his way. Yeah, because he was he looked winded. <laughs> <laughs> but he he comes out and um, he does his usual Miz shtick and. Then he starts talking. Like I said, this pay-per-view's off to a great start. <laughs> and so he starts kind of old shitting, and um, he starts, you know, doing his typical mystic. Oh, thanks for insisting I wrestle to to the fans. And then um, he's interrupted by uh, our truth, and then our truth gets interrupted by Ricardo, and then Del Rio comes out driving. And then it's just like, at first, I thought they were building up to a three-way between these guys, which was really weird because the crowd really wouldn't cheer for any of them. But then uh, then Kofi and Morrison come out, and then uh, Rey Mysterio comes out, and it's a six-man tag, which they didn't advertise at all, which, you know, I'll be on- before we get into covering this match in too much detail, it was a great match. It was but- a great match. Yeah. I, I don't quite understand why they didn't 
advertise it. They did that with a, they did that with two matches on the show. They didn't advertise either of them, but and okay. they just had them come out cold open, like you know. It, it was. What's, what's worse of that oh. is that two of the heels in this match are main event heels, and one, as we'll find out, is going to be the main event heel. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, well, the only thing I can think of this entire time was what was Kofi doing there? <laughs> I don't know. But... No offense to Kofi. It's not like I don't like watching him wrestle. It's just, you know, Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio has a reason to be up against any of those three heels at this point. John yeah. Morrison, obviously there for our truth. Yeah, th- this is something. Who did we'll Kofi piss off? <laughs> well, my theory is. Is, is my that... microphone on? Jesus, what the fuck? My theory is, is that uh, they, they, yeah. they needed. Racial good guy balance. <laughs> because they had the whites, the Latinos, and they needed the blacks to be equalized. Uh, right. Let's move on. Um, shit. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta fix this. <laughs> oh, I can dear. hear you, dude. What? Now you can hear me? We've been able to hear you. We're sorry for talking over yeah. you. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. We thought you were just being belligerent. I didn't think that you honestly didn't Oh, think no, that. no, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for having an opinion on, on this match. I'll, I'll yeah. just let you guys do the show without me. Well, no, it's... We're sorry. I probably feel like crap. <laughs> Thanks, dick. Hey, you guys got, got to say something, but now you've ruined it, so whatever. Go ahead. Seriously, it's not that big of a deal. Just go no, right I don't ahead. want it anymore. Uh, the show's ruined now. Fuck. <laughs> Face it, guys. SummerSlam's ruined forever. But, um... All right. Uh, we on that. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk. What I am trying to say is this is a running problem we are going to be seeing a lot during the show. Because the one thing I really noticed about everything, this show is incredibly padded. And there were, what, six matches tonight? Not yeah. counting at the end, which we'll get to. But with the, with the amount of padding that they did, I say all three of these guys, should, all six of these guys should have paired up and just had singles matches. Like, I would have done Truth versus Morrison if they hadn't already blown their load on Raw. I'd have done um, Miz versus Kofi, because, you know, they can put on a good match. And I'd have done Alberto versus Ray, because, again... You know, that's a good match. But no, as we're going to see, we have stupid crap like the CeeLo concert, which we'll get to. We had to give Adam no. Jones a the of the show. And w- when we get to the CeeLo concert, I'll kind of air my opinion about CeeLo. Yeah. We're but- all going to air our opinion on CeeLo during that fucking concert. Again, once again... I'd rather wait until the actual concert. Yeah, but um tangent later. Yeah, I, I I'd agree with you that it, it is a padded show and they probably should have done that, at least with Kofi and Miz and Ray and Alberto. Because really uh, they kind of I Albert, guess they, Alberto they kind guess. of blew their load. They they really did blow their load on Raw with uh R Truth versus John Morrison. And it it was because it wasn't it was just because of how decisively he lost. And, you know, I'm sure you guys covered this on the Raw show, but uh, I don't I don't know. Well, Mm. let's talk about the match itself. The match itself was decent. I'll give them that. I I disagree. I think this was I think this was a very good match. I agree. Um, These are these are great talents. I mean, they know what the fuck they're doing, at least. Yeah, it was. It was a fun six-man tag match that, you know, kept you guessing, even though you you, you already knew who was going to win. But, you know, it there were points where it looked like that was going to be it, and then they just swapped it right there. And it was kind of – it was like that. It was a series of – I wouldn't say a series, but there was a few really good false finishes. And um, it was it was a really good match. I liked pretty much everyone in there. Kofi, Kofi's Kofi. I mean, you know, I don't really hate the guy, but he is kind of, he's like, he's like the new RVD. He's the Shelton Benjamin, I think, is a better description. 
Shelton Benjamin was a way better wrestler. Um, <laughs> uh, like, when I say he's new RBD, he comes in, does the spots, leaves. And, you know, which is why he doesn't get as big of a pop when he comes back out, because he does pretty much the same thing, just in a different order. And, you know, I, I like Kofi, don't get me wrong, but, you know, eh. As far as um, the other talents go, I, I think John Morrison probably shouldn't probably should have got the pin over Mysterio, but he is the most over out of he is the most over person on his team, so I can understand why he got the pin. But I think Morrison needed a, needed it a little bit more after being spanked on Raw by our truth. Uh, yeah, he ain't ever going over in anything now, thanks to uh, his little. Yeah. Yeah, let's, 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 let's we, we've discussed that enough, though. But, uh, yeah, it was a pretty good match, and uh, basically Team Face wins. But let's move on to another segment that was actually pretty funny, because we have CM Punk backstage with Johnny Ace, motherfuckers. I think you mean John Laurinaitis, sir. Uh-uh, I'm running with that tag. <laughs> 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 I've embarrassed myself once. I'm fucking running with this. Uh, and and uh, Johnny Ace wants an apology for um, what was uh, for what was done to him on last Monday's Raw. And um, he pretty much and Punk just pretty much straight up mocks Laurinaitis. And um, near, I, the end, near the end, he starts making these really weird faces at Laurinaitis, which were really funny. <laughs> I, I have to say, we said it before, but we're, I'm going to say it again. As poor as Laura Nice is as a talent scout, he is awesome at portraying pure douche asshole. Well, that's he's not acting. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Something thing. Just a second. It's kind of like Charlie Sheen on Two and a Half Men. Charlie Sheen isn't acting. <laughs> no, something just this second actually hit me. Think about what happened at the end of the night, and think about this promo. If it didn't break kayfabe, do you think these two events would be related and at all? Huh. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. But um anyways. Yeah, I I I'd, I'd agree with you Backlash, but um so after Punk finishes talking to Ace, he turns around and sees Stephanie McMahon, aka my god is she hot. Um Milf. Oh d- dude, totally. Um S- Steph is um she says that she's here to wish him good luck. And Punk has this look on his face. It's like, you you know I'm supposed to be the bad guy, right? <laughs> and, um, and, and, uh, he, uh, he tells Steph to run along and talk to her husband and, uh, wish her dad luck in the job market. And, um, she said, she basically says, oh, they wish you luck, too, along with John Cena. This is all fair and what have you. And she extends her hand. And uh, Punk goes, I'd shake your hand, but I'd know where it's been. And then he goes, oh, <laughs> burn, sick burn. Oh, God. <laughs> the obvious joke is there, but as somebody who's read the sleaze lists that you that permeate you, uh, wrestling, that's even fucking funnier. Oh yeah, like <laughs> just sick burn punk, and like the look on her face was just like you smug little shit. <laughs> it was it was it was an awesome segment. Like, and I really this is the type of stuff that I miss. These are the type of segments, the obvious comedy segments that kind of plagued. WrestleMania, but the difference is they're actually funny here. <laughs> well, we actually got somebody. Well, I don't know if, Pro, if Punk did this himself, but if he did, we finally got somebody making jokes who has fucking wit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not just. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. But um, afterwards, we get a, a video package for Sheamus and Mark Henry. Video packages, something that will be quite present during the night. Again, yeah. we'll get and, to this. And if I'll, anybody, I'll have a. Oh, go ahead. No, I'll just ha- I just want to say I'll have a lot to say on this when we get to the main event. And I was I was going to say that if there was any match that needed the video hype, it's a Mark Henry Sheamus match. Now, 
I, I'm going to be f- fair here. I went in with all intents. Like, I was, r- I love Sheamus. I think Sheamus is awesome. I like his look. I like his moveset. I like, I like anything he does. I even thought he was kind of cool when he was doing his LARPing, when he went through his LARPing stage. But this match was disappointing. I mean, it was yeah. your standard Mark Henry match, really. How, Sheamus got in some pretty good offense, but... Uh, it's fucking Mark Henry. What else can be done? It's yeah. Fun. I mean, really, there's... You you are pushing the world's most unathletic man. I mean... What gets me is that he's been doing this match for nearly 20 years, and WWE still hasn't figured it out. He He is not... He should, he's getting these annual pushes and he really shouldn't because he's not a good wrestler. He can't talk. And I'll be honest with you. If I didn't know his Olympic background, I wouldn't find, he doesn't look all that intimidating. He looks like the black Pillsbury doughboy. <laughs> I mean, there's really not much more to be said about this man. Well, I don't know about that because I, I, I'd look at him and say, like, if I piss this guy off, he might sit on me. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that is very no. true, Backlash. The problem is, you could probably outcrawl him while he's running at full pace after you. <laughs> yes, I believe we've all seen that video of him trying to race the Nexus. <laughs> but, oh, uh, mia. Any, anyways, uh, the finish of this match, um, they've been doing the spot a lot, haven't they? Where someone goes through the barricade. Yeah, but it didn't, it normally didn't end like this. The problem with this finish was that it made Sheamus look like a wuss. Not really. I wouldn't say it made him look like a wuss because still, that's per- throwing a man through the barricade at full strength and with the way they're booking Mark Henry, at least in terms of kayfabe, it, the fact that he was still moving and almost got to the ring before the count was out makes him look Fairly tough, and he was up and moving by the time like Mark Henry was out of the ring. You know, yeah, I, I buy the I buy the finish. It annoys me because countouts to me or roll ups are pretty much the same as roll ups to Jingus. Yeah, I, I don't like the fact that they went out like this just to continue the feud. If you really wanted Mark Henry to win so bad, just have him lose dirty, have him cheat or something. Like, we'll see later tonight. Have him, you know, have him do an illegal move. Have him put his feet on the ropes. Which, again, you know, with the way you're booking Mark Henry, like, his weight and his feet on the ropes... Would damage the ring. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you know... Well, I, I still view this as one of the the first of uh, a few booking mistakes. I, I Because if you really want to push Sheamus as the next big baby face, this would have been the time to do it, to to at least show that he could maybe overcome Mark Henry. I mean, if you want, I if you wanted to keep pushing Mark Henry, I'd have Sheamus win, but then have Mark Henry beat him down afterwards. Like, grab I think that would something. make it look even worse. I mean, like... Seamus winning, and then he just gets, and then the same thing that happened to Kane and Big Show happened to him. Well, no, no, like not have not have that happen. Like maybe even have Henry attempt that, but Seamus is able to escape. So, so you'd be like, "Oh, I got your number, fella." That, I mean, uh, Tifus. When we were talking to Tifus, or when I was talking to Tifus, he said that this finish was worse than a pinfall to him, and I disagree, because I think the pinfall is far more decisive than having to use the countout to beat him. However, this was a really weak finish, and it really didn't make anyone who was involved look good. So, I hope they continue this, and I hope they have a far more um, definitive finish the next time they have the match, and given a interview I read with Seamus on WWE.com. They're going to continue this feud, which really fucking irks me, but there's nothing I can do about it. Mark well, and- it's it's keeping Mark Henry away from the World Heavyweight Championship for <laughs> now, at least. Uh, yeah. Mark, yeah. Mark Henry will always get his super push every two years that vanishes because somebody gets off their drugs and realizes, oh, fuck, we've been pushing Mark Henry again. Cut, cut, cut. Someone send in the other taker. Kill him. 
But, um, you know, I, I just, eh. it, this match was very, eh, to me. But this yeah. next match drove me up a wall. But first, well, no, no, no. Wait. Yeah, we have some stuff to talk about. We have Christian being interviewed by Josh Matthews backstage. Yeah. Uh, son of a bitch. I, you know, this interview yeah, was really, funny about, this interview was really redundant. I mean, this, this was the epitome of padding, really. But, um. Oh, I beg to differ, but we'll get to that. I, uh, this to me was more padding that, because of, because of how redundant it was. At least there was like, a wrestler in it. Uh, we'll get to that. The next segment. Yeah, that's yeah, the next segment. They, they involve wrestlers, so, technically. So, but this was more just redundant than anything. I felt like I was just watching a repeats of SmackDown. I mean, you know, I, I, I just didn't like this segment. It had Christian in it. And, you know, so I guess that's a plus. But I, I really just didn't... I didn't like it. But uh, the next segment is going to be very polarizing. You guys, you two with the most rage and bile can go ahead. And uh, I'll get to my opinion after you're oh. done. Well, go for it. Uh, I'll start because I'm probably neutral. Uh, it's time for the Seal Green concert. And there was only one thing that I observed while I was watching this, because admittedly I was going to get cake and ice cream. They had to work very hard to find people in the uh, audience who were giving a fuck about this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, again, once again, this it's the same thing with the Kid Rock concert. Well, at least and, Elo's a bit more relevant than Kid Rock. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I like CeeLo. I like his music. I think he's, I think he's talented. And even though I like CeeLo, this shouldn't have been on the show. Like, no, they, really they could have been. filled this. Boo shouldn't have been on the show. <laughs> I, I like CeeLo. Uh, again, I like CeeLo. I like his music. I've liked him for quite some time. And, but god damn man look WWE I get what you're trying to do you're trying to stay popular and relevant and at least you're bringing in celebrities that at least that at least appear to like wrestling but um really at least I mean, it wasn't a full kiss concert ooh, yeah, this, I, this other thing is or Megadeth in 1999 hello I, I would like to point out one thing two songs is not a concert yeah, I don't yeah. know why. I, I don't know why anyone's calling it that. He did and I, well, what are some? It wasn't Kid Rock. No, wait, you be quiet, okay? Edit yeah, that out. Show. I, I, I found it actually hilarious when he got to "fuck you" and he <laughs> couldn't sing "fuck you." It. So every time he has to say that, he just pauses and holds the microphone up, and nobody responds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that, that was Kid Rock cool. all over again. You remember that back at WrestleMania last year? Oh, well, at least there was at least maybe there was a few people in the audience who were like who were yelling "fuck you," but not exactly at the song per se, but more because <laughs> they, but more because they didn't want to see CeeLo. So it was, eh, I mean, but I think CeeLo got got his little stab in at the end. Oh, <laughs> which was kind of which was re which was actually kind of funny. That's so, not PG. So what happened was, um, at the end, he finishes his performance, and they pipe in some cheers. And uh, CeeLo looks at the camera, sticks his two fingers up like he's doing a backwards peace sign, and starts like flip, flipping his tongue in between the two fingers. <laughs> and everyone, everyone knows what he's doing. And <laughs> Just like this sheer audacity. Just because you know he was like, okay, so I'm going to sing fuck you. Okay, but we want you to censor it. Look, but that kind of takes away from the song. We don't care. PG. This is the one time where I'm in where I'm in full support with people who are kind of like, screw PG. Because if you're going to sing fuck you, sing fuck you. The, the only reason why he sang that song is because it's the only other song that you know, it, it, it's his only other hit. <laughs> well, that's not entirely true. But well, the question I have though is, it's why, couldn't we have hit, just, why couldn't we have just had a match? 
You had Dolph Ziggler versus Alex Riley for the U.S. title just sitting there presented to you, which would have been awesome on this pay-per-view, I think. And you put oh, I, I agree. And yeah, I, I agree. It was, it was terrible padding, but, you know, I don't believe people to get so pissed off that they had the guy do two songs. Well, it's not that we're pissed off that he did two songs. I it's disagree. Pissed off at the fact that WWE did this before and they haven't learned their lesson. Mm. So basically it boils down to he, he had a performance mm-hmm. instead of wrestling. I mean, <laughs> which is pretty much, which is pretty much what, and you know, some people hate CeeLo. So I'm pretty sure there are some people out there who are like, he's doing two songs. You know, I mean, there were some people in, in the thread who were like, he's doing two songs. Oh crap. You know, well, but I, I like CeeLo. I, I, you know, I think he was horribly, horribly just, he was thrown into the lion's den here and they totally. I almost like, wonder. I wonder if maybe it was part of the deal to use the song to uh, use so. Bright Lights Big City. I think I think um I think they were just like we want to use your song and hey, we want you to perform and he was just like, "Okay, more press for me." You yes. know. <laughs> Money press, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> I don't think it was a part of a deal or anything. I don't think he Yeah, I I, I don't think really he, doubt that. I think I don't think he strokes his own ego that much. Oh, well, it wouldn't necessarily have to be him. His record company could do that. I guess. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's their yeah. song. <laughs> but still, I don't think that was a part of the deal. Uh, but, uh, well, anyway. I, my, oh. What I wish we could find out, which is probably impossible to tell, I want to know who got the pay-per-view because CeeLo was announced to be on it. That's what I'd love to know. <sighs> People oh, with God. way too much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but you, the next match, oh, son of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> Beth Phoenix versus Kelly Kelly for the Divas title. The Ooh. biggest booking misstep of the night. Yeah. Easy. No question. No question. I mean, really, it, it was, it was set up to be a fluke victory. So I guess, but still, it, it's a huge booking misstep. I mean, how you're setting up this huge angle with like death to the bimbo and then you have the bimbo beat who you're trying to set up. I mean, you know, what why would you do that? And by Good the way, way make threatening heels, guys. <laughs> yeah. By the way, um I this may be misogynistic of me, but goddamn. Beth Phoenix was is and was hot. <laughs> I mean, See, I could not get past the fact that she, I've never seen her in ring gear like that. I've always seen her, her in, you know, like one color swap of that usual like pants top outfit. So I'm just staring at it going, why is she in a dress? Yeah, it does seem weird that uh, like, you know, I have a sneaking suspicion that was like her mocking the normal divas. But that's just my guess. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit. May, I, I, uh, a little, a little too much credit. It might have been in the back of their, it might have been subconscious, but I don't think it was a forethought or anything. As I hope she goes, I hope she goes back to her regular outfit, but, um. As one of our co-hosts has just yeah. pointed out, she also looked like ODB. Yeah. <laughs> no, her tits weren't that big. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. One of my main problems with this is, Basically, the entire match, Beth Phoenix is obliterating Kelly Kelly. By the way, hold on. I'm I'm sorry. I have to point out something. Go ahead. Ken Anderson was in a relationship with ODB, implying they had sex at some point. (laughs) Get that (laughs) in there. Damn it, War Machine. I hate... I really hate... And now to read an excerpt from my Jeff Jarrett slash Vic. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 you die. That's not really a match. That's a match. Not really a whole lot of memorable spots aside from Kelly Kelly snapping at one point where she's got Beth down in the corner and just starts screaming and slamming her head into the mat. I actually got kind of a chuckle out of that. That was pretty it was, awesome. It was just but, so um, but She's so adorable when she tries to be intimidating. <laughs> So, yes, as I was saying, Beth Phoenix basically kicks her ass up and down the street all match, and then suddenly she gets the quick roll-up, 
Which to me yeah. either implies no, this implies only one thing to me. Beth Phoenix has incredibly poor balance. <laughs> Because apparently that's the only way Kelly Kelly can beat Beth Phoenix, by exploiting the fact that she has a very odd center of gravity. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> I gotta agree with you there. Really, I, I wouldn't mind this as much if it wasn't Kelly Kelly. Yeah. I mean, if it, if it were, say, Beth Phoenix versus Natalia, and Natalia squeaked out like this, I would wonder why it wasn't a little more decisive. But... I would get what they were going for. But because it's Kelly Kelly, I know this is just going to... Beth Phoenix is going to win the title on Raw tonight. <laughs> yeah. If that, 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 if that happens... That's that, what's that going to happen. happen. Well, if that happens, that might confirm my suspicion that Vince Russo is secretly working for the company again because he's doing the exact same thing on TNA with the tag titles at this very moment. Every title, Backlash. Every title. I mean, I, I just, uh, I, don't, I don't understand. If you want title change, this happened on SmackDown too. If you want title changes to happen, have them on pay per view because it feel it's a rip off. It's a rip off to the people who bought the pay per view. This is this is booking one hundred and one, guys. I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm exactly qualified to do your job because really it would be an endless string of heels winning. No, let me rephrase that. People that I like winning. <laughs> like, it would be, it would be nepotism to the max. And, and you know, would, I, they wouldn't well, have to be related to So, you. well, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many people work on Dark Match here? What's the theory uh, where if you put enough monkeys in a room with enough typewriters, they'll write Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I just, I, in terms of, you know, favoritism, I, I'm, I'm automatically not qualified. But I I have to say, some of the mistakes they make, it's just like, what the hell are you doing? And the next mistake we're going to get to, but then we have more padding. We see Steph walking out of a locker room. And it's John Cena's. They keep hinting at this screw job the entire night. They were hinting at a screw, but it wasn't a screw job. Well, <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. <laughs> Speaking of Jolly, eh, that one's a little loose. Eh, I'll I try mean, to find at least it. she wasn't wiping her lips off when she came out. Oh, jeez. Which would have made the segment later a lot more uncomfortable. But, <laughs> um, oh, my favorite part of the night. Our truth is backstage talking to little Jimmy, and... We finally find out who little Jimmy is. It's Jimmy, Jimmy Hart. Hart. Who knew Jimmy Hart was the power behind the throne? And um, oh. so he's he's talking to him the whole time. And uh, he, he essentially says, you need someone like me. You need, you need a manager. You need uh, I managed the Hawk Talk Man, Hart Foundation, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and uh, he says, you need someone like me because you're not thinking big. And Truth goes... Yeah, you're right. I'm, I haven't been thinking big. I've been thinking, I've been thinking uh, short term instead of long term. I've been thinking little, Jimmy. And then he gets this look on his face, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "Little Jimmy," <laughs> and he's like, "You little Jimmy." And he, the like, Jimmy Hart was wearing sunglasses. But I would have paid anything for him to take off his sunglasses just so I could see the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, I would have loved? He was like, I'm not little Jimmy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I would have loved more in that promo is if instead of Jimmy Hart saying that he needs a man, he needs him for a manager, he said, you need me because you need some freaking entrance music. <laughs> <laughs> the only been- thing that would have made this better is if Truth asked Jimmy what a windjammer was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but uh, I gotta say, I'm I'm loving our truth. I mean, I I'm so glad they finally they they got this right with him because this could have been it, this could have been really bad. Like they've turned him in almost into a twisted metal black character. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's great. 
I mean, uh, okay, you know, I, I never really had any strong feelings for or against our truth before this. I always thought he was kind of bland and just needed something. I don't know what, but something to get people's interest up in him and to get him like, uh, and to get him heat or to get the crowd behind him. I didn't care what, but, and I'm glad they did this. I'm really glad. Of course, but, now that you um, said that, I picture him ha- setting his house or his head on fire, but it's not burning him for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but um the next uh the next match Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett. <laughs> another match another match they didn't promote that <laughs> great. Wait a minute, yes they did. They did? When, when did they do that? Yeah. Like oh god. They, I don't know if they promoted it last week, but I think the week before, because Daniel or er, Daniel Bryan had a match and Wade Barrett was on commentary. They yeah, were talking not, about his that's end. Necessarily... That, that, that's not booking a match. That's setting up a feud. That's not booking a match. I thought I could have sworn they said that they had a match at SummerSlam. Well. Still, they could have, like, given a throwaway line. Like, they could have just run down the card on SmackDown. It's like, and we'll also be seeing Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett. No, 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 they were too busy hoping CeeLo was going to draw buys. <sighs> uh, we've, t- we've discussed this since we won. But uh, Wade Barrett comes out, and he's got his shoulder coat on. So automatically we know he's supposed to be badass. <laughs> but, Wade, um, wait, Wade, putting on a coat is not character development. I don't care if he wore it during NXT. I never freaking watched the first season of NXT. I did. Well, uh... <laughs> I feel sorry for you, sir. Actually, the first season of NXT wasn't that bad. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to be a 90s comic character. <laughs> oh, God. Somebody call Rob Liefeld. We can make a million of them. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> he's he's Rachel Ghoul. <laughs> but, um... I, I gotta say, this match was very good. Like, these two really know each other. And you can see that in the ring. However... Daniel Bryan is the holder of the SmackDown Money in the Bank. Alberto Del Rio has cashed it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spoilers. Yeah, uh, whatever. They, oh, good work, War Machine. Oh, eat me. Like, they haven't watched the show already. Anyways, uh, I, I gotta say, this is not a good way to book Daniel Bryan. And it's not giving me hope. It really isn't, because there's, I've been speculating, and many people also have, with this new double money in the bank, about if someone from either brand is going to be the first to lose, and it's only a matter of time before they have that happen, and, you know, it was speculated when they were still doing it at um, WrestleMania that Jack Swagger was going to be the first to lose, Uh, it was speculated that Miz is going to be the first to lose, and now it's looking like Daniel Bryan is going to be the first to lose. And I really, really hope that that's not going to happen. Or what's going to happen is that – because do, does anyone remember the last guy who announced he was going to be cashing his uh, money in the bank in at WrestleMania? Honestly, that doesn't. That um, wouldn't surprise me if they go that route with Daniel Bryan – give the case to someone else that I mean it's looking like that's it's looking like they're going to have a match at night of champions for the case and that's not kosher with me that's not a god Wade Barrett with the oh I I don't really mind Barrett I don't really mind Barrett so much I think I think he needs a new finisher I think he should just make the black hole slam his finisher but because that looks off my tv that looks way better than uh, the wasteland, but um, you know, I I gotta say, I'm really hoping that they go the completely opposite direction than what they're hinting at, and they just have, and they have Daniel Bryan get his match. I don't care if he really loses at WrestleMania. I would like him to win, but I don't want him losing the case at any point, even if that means a heel turn for him to hold on to it. I I do not want him losing it. But um good match, terrible finish. What do you guys think? Well, I I thought the fin- the finish was kind of sour on me at first, but 
I, I know they need to build up Daniel Bryan if they really are going to have him go into WrestleMania, but think about this. They've got nothing for him to do until WrestleMania, and I think feuding with Barrett is probably the way to go. And if you want to extend the feud, you have to give Barrett a win at first, and then this goes on into Night of Champions. If they want to wrestle for the case, let them wrestle for the case, but have Bryan go over. Like, mm-hmm. Make it a submission match. Bryan yeah. going over? <laughs> Shut your face. They gave him the case. <laughs> I mean, if seriously, because if they if they just spin around and give Barrett the case, why didn't they just have him win in the first place? I mean, you know, they obviously have something planned for him. I just I just really hope that they just they're doing this just to give Brian something to do until Hell in a Cell, and then he has a match there, and then at Survivor Series he's on team something or other and uh you know bragging rights and all that and then he just he goes into wrestlemania whether he wins or loses you know i just i just hope they don't i just hope they don't make this pointless and redundant but um yeah that's that's my final thought on the match i uh yeah um enough on that let's move on um Next up is the World Heavyweight title match, and we get another promo video. Padding! Hmm. Promo video... Okay, hold on. Let me stop you there, because you've been saying that about promo videos. Promo videos have always been a part of the pay-per-view. I mean, uh, let's be honest here. It's well, not- I know that. I know that. It's just like, this time it felt like they were just... Like, did Seamus and Mark Henry get a promo video? They've been showing the promo video. I mean, look... They showed the same promo video for Cena, for Cena Punk. And I, look, it's been padding on other pay-per-views. It's padding here now. There's really no difference. I mean, hey, well, I won't bitch so much about the promo videos, but whatever. Let's, cause I know we all want to talk about this match. So mm. Christian comes out and uh, he earlier, he mentions like some big announcement. And so he comes out here at first, grabs the mic and starts talking about this big announcement. And, um, you know, he, he says, he gives his basic man of integrity stuff, and he says he has an insurance policy. And the way he was talking about it, it, it sounded like he was talking about Jericho. And, which was really weird, because he's going on tour with Fozzie, but I figured maybe he'll off appearance, and then he goes away for a little while. Um, but Edge comes out. I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see Edge. His hair so short. Uh... His hair was short. It was jarring. But, um... <laughs> not I, that much shorter than it was the last time we saw him. No, it, it, his hair was, like, down to his shoulder blades last time we saw him. Now it's only down to his neck. Yeah, it was weird. Mm-hmm. But, um, I, I... Edge showed up, and, um... He started talking about, um... You know... Everyone knows I can't wrestle. Because if I do, I'll probably wind up paralyzed. So, I, I felt a great sense of pride in passing the torch on to you when you won and you beat Alberto. And it looked like this was kind of heading to a Christian face turn. Um, but he, he essentially says, you've been acting like a punk <laughs> for a while. And, uh, you know, he says, I, I've done some despicable things in my career, but I did them with style. I didn't. I'm laugh. just like you, but I'm so much better at it. Yeah, I'm way more awesome than you. <laughs> and I was just like, I love you, Edge. <laughs> I love Edge. He's been my favorite wrestler since I since I started watching wrestling back in back you know late 2000, early 03. And you know, I. God, I love this man. And I was so I was shell shocked when he retired. But he he came out and um he essentially put Christian in his place and said, I'm not helping you. Bye bye. And I was just like, oh snap. And my first thought after, you know, the initial shock settled was, Oh man, he's gonna help Orton. And I love Randy Orton, but that's not how I wanted the match to end. Mm. And um but it goes into the match and this was a this was a really good match. Like, oh. their matches have been of a very consistent ever since they started having these series matches of theirs. And, um, and I gotta say, 
this this was probably the best out of all of them because it, there may be another in the future, but it'll probably be a three way of some type. And this this felt like a very definitive end to uh, what they wanted to do. And um, and you know, I know the finish may annoy some people. Because, you know, it's it's now the cool thing to hate Horton. But, um, you know, I I got to say that the men, it made both the men look strong. It made Orton look like he deserved to be champion. It actually made Christian look like a fighting ch- champion. And, you know, it, it showed a vicious side of Christian that we hadn't seen before because he's been doing his chicken shit heel. But I, I'm going to stop talking, and I'll, I'll chime in, but I'm going to stop talking right now. You guys can go ahead. Well, I, I thought this match was really good. I mean, for a no-holds-barred match in this day and age, it actually felt it's exciting. It felt like – it felt epic. It felt like the big blow-off that, these, that this three-month feud, however long it's been going, needed. And – I, I have to applaud both men for putting on one hell of a show. I mean, I know Christian's got to be hurting after that RKO under the steps. God damn. How did he not break his neck? But uh, the one thing the one thing that actually kind of caught me off guard was I, I had expected Edge to come back and interfere somehow. Like, I know he can't probably get in the ring and do actual moves and spear people, but... I, I think the man can still swing a chair. I, I'm not surprised that he didn't come back. Because that's very much what it felt like was, you know, Christian, that's what Christian brought him for was, you know, you're going to back me up, buddy. And Edge went, no, you kind of turned into a fucking idiot. Well, hey, Christian with a chair. Well, but that, that's just fucking cold. <laughs> well, that's it, maybe. He just doesn't agree with his, you know, the way he's been doing things. He doesn't want him. He doesn't have it out for him. Mm, I don't know. I just, maybe I just wanted to see more Edge. Yeah. Revolver Man, you've been kind of silent. Well, I've been silent because I can't stand Randy or Otard. So I've decided to spare you my rant about how this motherfucker keeps getting over, keeps getting titles, and pissing me off. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, I guess I, I feel weird that we're moving on from this already because it was a spectacular match. I, really feel I like have one more thing to say. Okay, go ahead. And I don't know if someone brought it up. But um, at, near the end of the match, Orton, like, slashed open his hand. Oh, God, yeah. And uh, at the end... At one point, I don't even think he noticed it first, but he was um, setting Christian up for the RKO on the stairs. And he just looks at his hand, wipes the blood on his face. (laughs) And then after he gives Christian the RKO, he goes up uh, on top of the ropes. And, like, he's showing off the championship. And he looks at the camera and, like, gives the thumbs up with his bloody thumb. (laughs) It was awesome. It was awesome. (laughs) I think even Revolver Man might have to admit that was actually pretty cool. It was cool, but once again, it leads into somehow this fucking psychopath is a face for some fucked up reasons. Hey, if nothing else, you got to see Randy Orton get her. (laughs) Look for the bright side, people. Look for the bright side. You know what? All right, I'll give that to you. Randy Orton hurt himself. That makes me smile. <laughs> so, um, the next match, we, it's match of the night. It's the thrill in Manila. It's CM Punk versus John Cena. So the entire night, they've been building up the potential for a screw job mm-hmm. on either party. And it looked like it was going to go, the screw job was going to favor... Hang uh, on, hang on. You're, you're kind of jumping ahead. This is something I've been wanting to talk about all night. I know you don't like me bitching about video packages, but they just went really overboard with with all this, all this stuff. Because 
First, we have SummerSlam access <laughs> because we needed that. So what a better thing for something that isn't showing up on the pay-per-view and is over. Yeah. And we Well, I'm not talking about video packages in general. I'm more talking about promos for matches. Yeah, but it's- like the access video package was padded. Padded a glorious padding. Well, yeah, the, I'm more talking about like video packages and stuff like that. I let him finish, man. Let him finish. Yeah, let me just let me just go through everything we got. We got the re, we got the SummerSlam access. We get another backstage thing of Triple H talking to Stephanie McMahon. We get, and then we get another video package hyping up the match. And then they then they're, while they're doing the entrances, they even managed to pad that out because first Triple H comes out. And then CM Punk comes out, and they pimp 7-Eleven in the middle of his entrance, just to add a, about 20 more seconds onto it. Then they have Cena come out, and then instead of just starting the match, they, they, uh, they do the extended uh, introduction on the mic, and Triple H checks them for weapons, which they never do anymore. It, I would say... Oh, go ahead. It took... It felt like... It, it took at least 20 minutes between the end of the World Heavyweight Championship match to get to the beginning of the next match. I, will, oh, I, I, mostly, there. I mostly agree with you, Backlash, with the exception of the pre-fight, uh, the pre-match things that they were doing, because in my opinion, that makes this match seem like a huge deal when they do special things like that. It makes it sound like this WWE match is fucking important. That's something they've seriously been lacking. They've treated title matches not different than any other match, and that kills it by having Triple H look for uh, weapons, by having the ref, by having somebody give them the special introductions. To me, that says big match, and if it's your heavyweight title match, it should be big match. Yeah, yeah, you can do that, but they could have done it faster. That I, I know I'm being very broad here, but it felt like it it, it just dragged on forever. But um, back to what I was saying a little earlier, they they were um, the entire night they were kind of building up to a possible screw job, and um, that's kind of what everyone was expecting. Um, and you know they with you know Stephanie coming out of John Cena's locker room with the. Uh, Triple H kept whispering something to Cena during the match, and you didn't know what it was. But it probably sounded like robble, 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 robble. I know uh, a couple of people who thought that Triple H was going to screw both of them and claim the title for himself, but some people just can't stand Triple H. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, but I, I knew they weren't going that route. They're not, if they haven't done it already, they're not going to turn Cena heel now for this. Well, you see, the thing is, in their minds, Cena is still the face and CM Punk is still the heel, even though that's not what it is in the eyes of the public. Right, but even if Triple H screwed uh, uh, CM Punk and uh, Cena got the win, that doesn't make Cena a heel. I mean, Cena could have been thrown out of the ring, like knocked out, knocked silly or whatever. Triple H uh, pedigrees the fuck out of uh, CM Punk a couple of times. And then uh, throws uh, Cena on and makes the count. That's not Cena being a heel. That's more Cena being taken advantage of than anything. Exactly. Yeah. So they could have done the screw job for Cena and not turned him. So that's that's something they could. Have. Yeah, that that would have been the logical thing. But again, the swerve is that there is no swerve. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, not even to be funny. Well, that's not entirely true because well, Cena exactly. could kind of get screwed. Let, let's go. Let, let, let's do the match first before we get to uh, what happens after the match. All right then. Well, after all the introductions are made and everything, uh, I really CM Punk and John Cena. They have a good chemistry. Like, have oh they, yeah, have they worked together before WWE? Because it seems amazing that these guys just click. I doubt it. I mean, maybe I CM so. Punk and John Cena like. I mean, this is like the uh, the Hogan Warrior thing back in WrestleMania six, where they just book everything so perfectly before the match that it just comes off naturally during the match. Or maybe they really are just calling it in the ring. Well, I mean, you also have to. 
also have to take into account CM Punk is I, I, I hate to kind of fluff him this much, but he's a genius in the ring. I mean, he really knows what he's doing. And he could, him, he like Jericho could carry a broomstick and a sack of manure to the ring and have at least a three and a half star match. You know, I mean, and I think that's not giving him enough credit. I'm a huge punk fanboy. I, and you know, I honestly think that, and not to take credit away from Cena, because this is, you know, a two person job. They do know each other quite well, which is, and I think their feud at the beginning of the year was kind of feeler, you know, like the, just to see if maybe they could do something with them later. And their feud at the beginning of the year was decent. And, you know, that very brief kind of Nexus, new Nexus versus CM, uh, new Nexus versus John Cena thing that they did. But, you know, I, I gotta say, that actually might have been, WWE never books this long term, but that might have been just, to make that kind of, it was kind of an inimpressive thing, because uh, CM Punk never touched Cena and the other way around because of New Nexus, that it would make it seem like the CM, the Cena feud would be disappointing, lowering our expectations, and so when it blows up like this, it's just like, holy shit! <laughs> But anyways, regarding the match, I actually um, got a little chuckle out of Cena during this match because at several points during the match, the crowd starts chanting, you can't wrestle, which Cena would always then respond with a wrestling move. <laughs> like, really graceful. He did a absolutely beautiful drop kick. <laughs> like, I, you know, I've seen him do a drop kick before, so it's not that hard to believe. But it's almost like I completely forgot that he could do it. I mean, it was... You know, I think Punk really brings out the best in Cena. And I and the other way around. Because if you notice, in this program with Punk, his promos have been improving, his humor has been improving, and the matches that they've had have been awesome. Yeah. It, you know, I, I, I honestly think that they're really really, you know, good with each other and what have you. Right. But, oh, oh um, uh, noteworthy spots, I guess. Uh, there's a point where both men get knocked out outside the ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Triple H, he gets all the way up to a count of nine, and neither of them are getting up. So instead of just counting the double count out, he goes outside the ring, picks him up, and throws him back in. <laughs> and that... That's badass. Simply put. Hello? <laughs> I have to agree with you. That's... I, I thought the call dropped. Oh. <laughs> no, we, we were just impressed by this match, I think. Mm. And so, uh... Uh, let's move on to the end. The, uh... One of, um... Because at that... Uh, before the match, and I don't know if um, anyone talked about this, I honestly thought that um, it was going to be a no contest and they were going to go into Survivor Series, or not Survivor Series, the United Champions, with this. But um, I, you know, I was obviously wrong. But um, <laughs> when, uh, when Triple H got out and... And when it got to nine, I was like, see, I told you. And then Triple H got out. I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I look really stupid now. <laughs> I love it. One last thing I want to go before we go into the ending of the match. Uh, this is actually near the ending of the match. So it's pretty good to say this here. CM Punk hits this amazing elbow and everybody starts chanting for Savage. Uh huh. That was awesome. I love that. I noticed that CM Punk's done a lot of Based a lot of Savage's moves, and I, I guess he must have been a fan. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't blame him. Neither can I. But, um, so now we're at the end of the match. And, um, they keep hitting each other with their finishers, and they really put the emphasis on the submissions. I thought this was going to end with the tap out. And 
at that point, when I thought that, I knew who was going to win because there was no way in hell they were going to have Cena tap out. <laughs> but um, then uh, then uh, did Cena ever hit the attitude adjustment? Yes, he did, and Punk kicked out. Mm. Uh, and a Punk hit him with the GTS quite a few times actually. And um, near the end of the match, tr- uh, Punk is facing away. Or at least it didn't look like it. And he, it looked like he was watching Triple H because they were both really paranoid. And you could kind of see it that Triple H was going to try something. So uh, whenever, um, it would be really close to a three count and Cena would kick out, like Punk would look at Triple H like, did you just wait? You know, cause he, he had his back to Triple H. So when he's, um, so when he's counting it, He's staring at Triple H to make sure he doesn't try anything. Triple H has his back to Cena, and Cena puts his leg up on the rope. And Triple H doesn't see it. Match ends. CM Punk wins. And um, and so Punk is celebrating, and like people are cheering Punk, and they either they I don't think they piped in booze, but there was a few vocal Cena fans, and um. And so Cena essentially tells him my leg was on the rope and Triple H. And I could see um, him mouth it sort of. He says, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) And and, uh, I was I was like, well, that was that was I totally thought they were going to restart the match. And then uh, but um, so Punk crawls back in the ring and I was like, oh, shit. Here we go. Fucking Triple H is going to pedigree him, and then Alberto Del Rio is going to come out, cash in, store night in. Triple H raises his hand. And that's when I thought, I was like, okay, it's going to happen. CM Punk, you fool. And then, like, Punk is looking at him like, are you serious right now? And uh, and so he relaxes, and then I'm like, that's, that's it right there. And then Triple H leaves the ring. I was just like, well, this was certainly... Um, non swervy Then all of a sudden all of a sudden this big tall dude walks in the ring. <laughs> At first I was like, who who is that? And then I thought maybe it was like Kali, because it cause he was tan, had black hair, and was huge. <laughs> so I was just like, what's Kali doing here? And then I was like, wait a second, because it like spun around and it kind of showed it from this angle. I was like, that's Kevin Nash. <laughs> he kicks Punk in the gut, power bombs him, like leaves him dead. Triple H spins around, and he's like, What are you doing? What is this? And he's just and like, you know, Nash is like, What's up, man? And he leaves the ring. <laughs> And then, like, and then Del Rio comes out, cashes in. He hits him with an enzigiri, which I thought was really lame, by the way. One, two, three. Alberto Del Rio is your new WWE champion. Yay! What the hell just happened? <laughs> the, we were shell shocked. I, I don't have any words for this. Holy yeah, crap! Th- this was well. First of all, I would have never guessed. I would never have guessed the situation. I also, if I had somehow guessed the situation. Never would have said fucking Kevin Nash because knowing Kevin Nash, if he tried to put Punk up for the power bomb, he probably would have broke both his legs. But fucking Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash, what in why? What why? In the what? blue hell? Is it going to be revealed that Punk disrespected Kevin Nash when he was like six? And Kevin Nash was still fucking Diesel or something? I'm, you know what I'm going with? Kevin Nash is a mercenary. <laughs> you know no, what? No, no. I actually have to use this quote from um, Ali. He called it the torn quad alligator moment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, I, Al. Thank you, Ali. That's perfect. I'm serious about the mercenary thing. I think that's the gimmick they're going for. He will go to the highest bidder because that pretty much wraps up Kevin Nash's career. (laughs) I was just about to say, isn't that Kevin Nash in real life in a nutshell? (laughs) I mean, that's pretty much Kevin Nash in real life. And this is very much like, you know, I wouldn't say it's very like 
shooty, like work. It's obviously a work, but you know, it's oh, they're no. bringing in a lot of stuff from real life, and you know, we find out tonight that Kevin Ash actually did fucking lose his mind and attack fun for no reason, and they just rolled with it because it worked. <laughs> I would actually accept that. That would actually be rather awesome if they did that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was crazy. I have to say that that create that's something seriously lacking in wrestling these days. Legitimately fucking wild moments. Mm-hmm. Like really because wild moments, not just stupid moments that you see on TNA all the fucking time. Wild moments. Where you don't know what the hell is going on. Because uh, it takes quite a lot to make me surprised. I I pretty much, you know, it was surprising when Punk won, but not unforeseen. Because this was an incredibly hot angle. Mm-hmm. This could this was a very good possibility. I never expected Kevin Nash. It it felt like something written in an E Fed. <laughs> See, but here's the thing. We say this, but the only reason why none of us saw this coming is because we don't follow Kevin Nash on Twitter. I follow Kevin Nash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but your no one follows Kevin no, Nash on Twitter. No, it doesn't matter if you're following him on Twitter. This is the last thing anyone would have thought of. There were people in the back who were scratching their head about this. <laughs> Did we plan that? <laughs> Like I said, it goes back to my theory that Kevin Nash legitimately lost it and WWE just decided, hey, this fucking works. Go, Rio Rio. Go, go, go. I mean, I, I gotta... It was it was good. It was good. It was definitely good. Well done, WWE. Hats off to you. But, uh, yeah, good match. Mm-hmm. Insane finish. <laughs> And it really does kind of set up the next few months. I mean, you know, they're, they could do anything. I mean, there's really limitless possibilities at this point. They could have a gimmick where Kevin Nash powerbombs people for no reason at the end of their matches. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> uh, Tifus, I think Tifus said it best. He won't, Kevin Nash just shows up every now and again, just interjects himself every few years into a major angle, powerbombs somebody, and leaves. Kind of like Farouk. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I like this match. I like this match a lot. I thought it was good wrestling, full full back and forth. I, I did not know for a second who was going to win, and I love that. I want to be kept on my toes. Like, if... If I'm expecting Cena wins at everything, WWE, you're not doing your job. But, you know, they have done a fantastic job of this, you know, with this angle. All right, considering that uh, we have a show we want to watch, it's pretty obvious, yeah. we should start wrapping this up. Yeah, um, let's, let's do a, what gets more screen time than, um, hmm, I don't even know. Dolph Ziggler. What gets more screen time than Melina? We're doing Melina now. Okay, we're doing Melina. What gets more screen time than Melina? Um, hmm. If anybody takes the obvious one, you have no, to. No, no, no. We're not going to go. We're not going to chat. That. No. Uh, I got one. John Morrison gets more screen time than Melina, but for, for much longer. Oh. Sick burn. Um. I can't go with Nash. <laughs> uh, you know, I had one, but I've forgotten it. Oh, you know, it's like it. Jr. gets more screen time than Melina. Oh, come on! Man is getting more screen time than Melina. <laughs> She's also Tell a louder. I didn't hear you. Um, I don't know. Bad booking gets more screen time than Melina. <laughs> it wasn't bad booking though. No, not this match, but just in the show overall. Well, the, the match really propelled the show from bad to good. Okay, okay, how about this? Giant motherfuckers get some more screen time than shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the dark match. I'm Mr. War Machine, and I'm convinced that Bobby Flay and Tyler Florence are the same person. I'm watching Raw now. Go.
<laughs> I'm, I'm I'm backlash and holy shit power bombs. <laughs> I'm your token chick do with Angel. And I'm the revolver man. Good night and good luck and watch out for Kevin Nash. He will power bomb your ass. <laughs>